This is Darius Niga aka Shingetsu over here. Hello. Today I'm going to be bringing you a video about a very beloved weapon. That is to say the charge blade. So I will be doing this little guide that hopefully will help you out. First of all, I would like to start with some terminology. So let's get straight into it, shall we? So here we are guys in the arena so I can actually show you what I'm talking about. So first off I would like to start by showing you a few moves and the names that I will be changing. This move is referred to as an Amped Elemental Discharge and I will be calling it a super throughout this video. So here is the move. The next one is called uh, Super Amped Elemental Discharge and I will be calling it simply an ultra for the purpose of this video and the move looks exactly like this so yeah these are the only two terms that I will be changing throughout the duration of this video for the sake of simplicity and overall just to save some time Next thing I would like to go over the basic moveset of this weapon for those of you that are new so you can better understand the advanced part that I'm going to go through after we are done with the moveset. But before we can do even that I want to explain to you a couple of things about this weapon. So first of all you must know that the weapon works on a file system. Now what exactly does that mean? It means that under the sharpness bar, which is the green bar, you can see five little jars. Those are named files. There are two types of files in the game, KO files and elemental files. Now, for the purpose of this video, we will be using the KO type files, as they are in most scenarios the best ones, seeing that the Diablo Stranis 2 is in 99% cases the weapon that you will want to use. This weapon actually has two modes, so it has the sword and shield mode, which you can see over here, and the axe mode, which is this one. But we do not want to be using the axe mode, because it leaves you vulnerable to attacks. You want to always stay in the sword and board mode, because this allows you more mobility overall, and it allows you some defensive capabilities, not to mention that it is not encouraged to use X mode because of a new mechanic which allows you to charge your So to start off you must know that every single attack that you do while in sword and shield mode actually charges your files. So you will see the files slowly changing color into yellow and then into red as you can see. What this lets you do is actually charge the files and store them into your shield. You can do this by holding R1 and then pressing circle. As you can see the files are now full and loaded so you can actually start doing some interesting shenanigans which I will go over later during this video. So now that we're done with this stuff, we can actually go over the move set of the weapon and start dissecting it to show you what moves you will be using and what moves you shouldn't be using. Also in what order to use specific moves and some combos. So first of all we have the 3 hit combo which is performed by pressing triangle 3 times in a row and it looks like this. So we have weak slash, return strike and spinning slash at the end. This combo you do not want to be using because it lowers your overall DPS by using it and the second reason why you do not want to use this combo is because it does not charge your files quick enough. So this combo is a no no. The next move I would like to cover is a charged attack. You can perform this attack by simply holding circle and releasing when the sword flashes, so like this. 
very easy to do very simple you'll get used to it really quick and unfortunately i bounced right there but whatever also if you do not release uh, when the sword flashes you'll perform a very weak single slash so now I will be showing you some uh, combos that can be performed after the uh, charged attack which is called Sword Charge Double Slash Very nice name Capcom, very nice, very creative um, But yeah, the combos are Charge Slash and then Whoopsie Daisy The combos like I was saying are Triangle at the end and then you simply repeat into an infinite Or if you sense that an attack is coming and you want to do a faster attack You can do the shield thrust like this and then again go into an infinite The shield thrust can be performed as you can see by pressing triangle and circle at the same time I would like to show you another combo which is used to apply status effects so whether you're trying to make a monster go to sleep or trying to make it go into a paralysis state or uh, whatever you're trying to do this is the combo you want to be using to do it as fast as possible so it's a single weak slash followed by shield thrust and that is the combo guys I have seen some crazy stuff like Japanese players sleep bombing Kirin with the charge blade so believe me this is actually a very useful combo and it is very doable if you have the will to do it and the equipment of course. So now that you have your files loaded the first thing you want to do is charge your shield. This can be done by performing a super or an ultra. In this case we will be performing a super because we do not have our shield charged so we cannot perform an ultra. You can only perform an ultra when your shield is charged so that is one of the reasons why you want to charge your shields. Other reasons include the fact that you deal more damage while in X mode and uh, the third reason why you want to charge your shield is because this will allow your a very strong guard so let me show you how to actually perform an ultra from sword and board mode or a super as you can see above the the head of my character I have performed this move by using a weak slash a shield thrust and then a super which can be done by pressing triangle and circle at the same time right after the shield thrust so now I will show you how to actually cancel this into a shield charge the more keep in mind that the more files you have the longer the shield will uh, remain charged So as you can see it is enough to simply cancel the super animation with R1 to do an elemental round slash which is very easy to do you just have to get used to the timing. Okay guys so the next move I would like to cover is how to actually charge your sword. You can do this by actually loading your files. So let's get our files read. Now once you have them read and you want to store them by holding again guard and pressing circle. When you do this immediately after pressing circle you want to hold down triangle. So like this until you see that animation over there of the shield actually um, changing its animation so the reason why charging your blade is so important is, other than the fact that it does a boatload of damage if the attack connects is the simple fact that it gives you mind's eye and 
your attacks will actually deal extra KO damage being a KO file. If you would have an elemental file, like let's say an ice elemental file, you would actually do extra ice damage with your sword attacks. So it is very important to actually charge your sword as to avoid overcharging your blade. What I mean by this is that, let me demonstrate this to you a second. What is mind's eye? So let us charge our shield. And next we will charge our sword. As you can see the damage is very high on this attack. And uh, what I mind's eye means is that your attack will not bounce. So I will overcharge here, as you can see my sword is overcharged and my attacks are not bouncing because I have the sword charged. This will allow you to actually put the monster uh, into a pressure situation where you are effectively mauling down on him even if your files are overloaded. Next up I would like to briefly talk about guard points and what exactly they are. So a guard point is essentially the guard frames at the start or at the end of an animation. There are multiple guard points, one of them is at the end of the 3 hit uh, combo. So as you can see at the end there he puts the shield forward which allows you to actually block attacks during that animation without holding down R1 if you time it correctly. The next one and the most important one is the, sh the axe morphing one. As you can see the first thing the character will do while morphing into axe mode is put his shield forward and then insert the blade. This allows you to actually perform a guard point in the most easy fashion and the most quick fashion so you can actually block in the most effective way and then counter because after a guard point you must know that you can actually proceed directly into an ultra or a super if you so desire. It depends on the uh, opening time you have during the monsters attacks etc etc. So let me show it to you. As you can see he puts the shield forward before anything else. Some other moves that allow you to perform guard points will be the sidestep. As you can see he puts the shield again forward at the end of the animation. And when you morph back into sword and shield mode from axe mode, this will allow you to perform another guard point. This is very useful if you miss your first guard point. Now allow me to demonstrate how the X-Morph guard point, which is the most important one and the one you will be using uh, in 99% of the cases. So let's see if we can manage to it correctly. That is how it looks without having your uh, shield charged. Now let us see how it looks with the shield charged. As you can see after it you can perform an ultra. So this is why guard points are very important. The difference between a normal block by holding R1 and a guard point is the fact that during a guard point you have more stability to your guard, meaning that the monsters will not effectively knock you back with certain attacks and you will be able to counter with a, an ultra. So allow me to show this again to you. You can notice that this actually does a little spark when you perform it correctly. So that's how you know when you will perform it correctly. You can train uh, guard for guard points right here or against monsters preferably because this way you will also learn the moveset of the monsters. So now that we are done with 
What I consider the core aspects of the charge blade, we will go over some of the mobility weapons which this weapon has because this weapon is a sweet knife. It has everything you could ever want from a weapon and it excels at everything it does with the correct build of course. So now I will be showing you some options for mobility which include after an attack a simple sidestep. So you can actually change this by doing triangle afterwards and you can just keep doing it. You can uh, jump to the left, to the right, as you prefer, and you can just chain it together. This move is very useful if you are close to a weak spot or and want to actually hit it or simply for evasion. Next up we have the slide move, which is this. So after performing an attack and uh, any type of attack like the weak slash you can press a directional input plus circle which will allow you to do the slide move. This is very important in certain situations where you do not have any files and I will be demonstrating this in a, an actual gameplay video where I commentate over what I'm doing. Now I will show you how all of these moves can be used during an actual hunt. So let's do this boys. So we're going to do a brief walkthrough of a hunt that I recently made with the Diablos. This will be with the Kajar Ice Stronger. So uh, Diablos is very weak to this weapon so it will be a very fast run. Not gonna have much to comment on it except for me dragging myself like there's no tomorrow. Which will prove to be very beneficial in the end but I, to be completely honest with you let's just talk about what I do in this video. So first of all you will notice that I unsheath my weapon first and then proceed into a charge attack. Then I do a dodge roll to evade his roar which is the best strategy overall because you do not want to block the Diablos' roar with this build. It will knock you back and that is not good because you cannot counter from that. Here I get hit unfortunately because I was playing too aggressive. You never want to play too aggressive with this weapon. You want to be patient enough to the point where you do enough attacks so that you weaken the monster and not overexert yourself with the charge attack. Right here you can see me aiming for the weak spot which is the head because I want to break that last horn. What that will do is stun him so I can proceed and do another ultra on him just like I did earlier. Unfortunately we get hit again with the tail but it doesn't seem to do much damage and now that we got him Right where we wanted, we proceed into an ultra which completely annihilates his will to survive. As you can see, he actually just buries underground and then he comes back out because he's like, oh, I want to play with you again. But then he's like, nope, best not mess with Darius. And uh, here is where I kill him with a nice uh, attack on the weak spot, which is what you want to do. I want to thank you very much for watching this guide and hopefully it has been useful to you. I will also post some links in the description on a guide on how to dodge monster roars. This has been Darius and Anna. Thank you very much for watching again.